Welcome to Familypreneur, the podcast for parent entrepreneurs raising kidpreneurs. It's time for your weekly dose of inspiration and actionable tips to build your business and find better balance, all while strengthening your family. And now we'd like to introduce your host. She's my mom and the bomb.com, Meg Meg Brunson. Hey there, welcome to episode number 67 of the Familypreneur podcast. Today's guest was only 11 months old when she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. As she grew from infancy to childhood, she displayed a determination to do whatever she set her heart and mind to, and typically no one tells her otherwise. Her father often told her she would be a CEO or an entrepreneur someday, as long as she, as he put it, used her powers for good. And that she did. In January of 2016, she began making her first bath bombs. Within a few weeks, her products were selling in local gift shops, and to date, they are sold online and in eight retail outlets in two different states. In almost two years, she's donated over $6,000 to various charities and has committed to donate 20% of all net retail sales to juvenile diabetes research via the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation and Beyond Type 1. Today, we're super lucky to be joined by the 11-year-old CEO of Be Beautiful, Hannah Grace. Hi, Hannah. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, thank you. I'm really excited to have you here. Me too. Thank you. So like I mentioned to you just a minute ago, we've mostly interviewed adults or grownups, mm-hmm. but you are not quite there yet. So how old are you now? I'm 11. And when did you start your business? New Year's Eve of 2016. So we are two years in, right? Did I do yeah. the math right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're still going strong. Yes. <laughs> Well, I would love if you would start by telling us a little bit about how that business got started. Was it your first business? Yes. So tell me about that. So um, on New Year's Eve of 2016, we were heading over to Lush to buy bath bombs. And it was a little bit of a drive. So my dad was like, Hannah, I bet you can make these and even sell them yourself. So I did. And like I made them and found a good recipe and brought it to a local store in my area. And it worked and they put it on social media and it just blew up from there. Is your dad an entrepreneur? Like what made him suggest that you should just buy him and sell him? I'm not sure what like just like out of the blue asked him, like you want to make these and sell them. But yeah. So was it intimidating for you? Were you nervous about that? I was more excited in the moment. So yeah, I was like looking at Lush, buying bath bombs. And like just getting some ideas to get started. That's awesome. So what was your first step once you decided that that's what you wanted to do? You wanted to make these, make the bath bombs. Mm -hmm. And you said you Googled it and found out recipes and things like that. What was the next step for you? The next step was to buy the ingredients. And my dad actually like gave me a loan just to like start off because we didn't know where it was going. And we had to buy some of the ingredients online, but we did find some of the other ingredients in stores. And once we all had them and we were ready to go one night, we started making them. We let them dry overnight. And like in the next couple of days, I did my first YouTube video about it. So you, you said your dad gave you a loan? Yes. And so you knew you had to repay him back? Is, was that part of the condition? Yes. What was your thought on that process? Did he make you pay like interest? Do you know about interest? No. (laughs) (laughs) So it was just like he gave you X amount of money and you just had to pay him back when you had it. Yes. Well, that's awesome. So you've got all these ingredients. You made your first round of bath bombs. I'm guessing you tested them out and they were amazing. Yeah. (laughs) And who did you start selling them to initially? So downtown where I live, downtown New Bedford, there's a store called Hippo. And we brought them there and they liked them and they agreed to like try to sell them to see if they would sell. And they put it on social media. And after that, just like, like local newspapers started calling and like I was getting emails and I started my own um, on the website. I made a website. 
That's so awesome. And I love the name of the store. It sounds very fun and cute, Hippo. Yeah. So did you have to pay to have your products in the store or did they take some money from the products that they sold? Yeah, so it's like there's an amount that you don't have to pay to be in the store. You have to just like, once the products get bought, like you get an amount and the store gets an amount. Okay, and that's working well for you so far. Yes. So then you started your website. Now, did you build the website? Did your parents help you? My dad helped me, but I like designed it like how it would look. And you sell through your website now and you've got a YouTube channel. So tell me Mm -hmm. all the things that you're doing. I'm sure over the past two years, you've started doing more and more stuff. Yeah. So on the website, I do sell and 20% of the bath bomb money goes to JDRF and beyond type one, which is Nick Jonas's organization. And JDRF is a juvenile diabetes research foundation. And like they get donators to donate money to help find a cure for diabetes. And tell me a little bit. There's a personal story behind that. Why did you choose those organizations? I chose those organizations because I have diabetes myself and I thought it'd be really nice to give back. And do they both, Nick Jonas's organization also is connected to diabetes? Yeah, because he has diabetes himself. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So interesting. So tell me a little bit about at 11, what running a business looks like to you. Because I'm sure it's not the same thing for me. I work Mm -hmm. like 40 hours a week at my business. I don't have time to like go to school or ride bikes. So tell me about what it looks like for you. It looks like, like I do go to school and I do do gymnastics and cheerleading at my school. So it's mostly like doing bath bombs and packaging at in the evening, like at night. So, yeah. So that's still something that's really fun for you, right? Yes. So it makes it easy, I'm guessing, to like want to do it. Yeah. Does anybody else help you with the business? My family does help me just when orders get crazy. Like just around Christmas time, I had so many orders coming in. So yeah, they help me like package and mold and label. So you've trained your family to be bath bomb <laughs> makers with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so awesome. Do you have mm-hmm. any advice for like other kids who are out there who think that they might want to start a business? What would you tell them? I will tell them to keep going no matter what anyone says, if they judge you or anything, just keep going and you'll be successful. Now, you've also got um, a shirt, which is one of the newer things, and you're wearing it right now. Yeah. Tell us about the shirt. So I partnered with 546 Apparel, and they make shirts that, like, are, like, helping, and they're, like, just for people that have, like, silent illnesses, and they're just, like, encouraging. The shirt has your brand name on it, which is Beautiful. Yes. Where did you come up with the brand name? I came up with the branding just because like I have diabetes and I know so many people struggle just with their self image. So like you don't have to have anything to be beautiful. You just have to be yourself and not trying to be like anyone else. That's wonderful. Can I ask you, are you working on anything else right now? I am working on these little beautiful necklace charms. So they're like a work in the process. Well, that's awesome. I can't wait to see those. My kids love jewelry, and I think it's a great message for all of our kids to receive. Hannah's dad was in the room during this interview. So off camera, I asked Hannah if it would be okay if we also talked to her dad and asked him some questions. She said yes, and her dad said yes. So now let's talk to Kenneth. Hey, Kenneth, thanks for hopping on and joining us as well. No problem. Thanks for having me. What made you make that suggestion for Hannah to start the business? Like what, what was it that triggered that thought in your mind? Uh, I was kind of practical in a way. Cause like she uh, had recently, we were at a Lush store in another state. That's when she first learned about bath bombs. And so you just kind of start calculating, you know, seven or eight bucks a pop and uh, how much she liked them. And I was thinking like all of her allowance, like it's, you know, it's kind of uh, a lot of money to spend. I said, I bet, you know, she's very, always been very crafty and creative, like DIY. She's always making slime or baking or just doing a lot of different hands-on 
type of experiments. And yeah. so I kind of figured if she can do those things, she could probably make bath bombs. I didn't know really what it was or what was in it, but I kind of figured it was simple ingredients, kitchen ingredients or something like that. And and so I just challenged her to say, you know, hey, instead of spending all your money on it, why don't you make them and have some for yourself, but then also maybe even make a business out of it, you know, not expecting that it would be what it became, what it, what it has become. Right. And do you have business background or has that been a totally new experience for you? Totally new. We're learning together. Uh, I've, I've been a teacher most of my life. So um, yeah, I don't have the business background at all. So we, we kind of learn together and research together. Um, and, you know, I try to really make it more on her, you know, when, when she first went into that store downtown, you know, I'd always told her, you know, I would support in the background, but I wouldn't speak up on her behalf. I wouldn't say, Hey, you know, sell my daughter's products. I told her, you know, this was all on her to, to put the foot forward and, you know, and initiate it. And so we, we probably were in the store like 20 minutes before she had the courage to walk up to the counter. Uh, we probably did laps and it's a very small store. We did many laps checking out products for, for a while before she finally said, okay, I'm ready to do it. Well, that's awesome. And do you have any tips for, for balance, like for a parent who's trying to juggle their own career, rather whether it's working for somebody else or being an entrepreneur themselves and then trying to, you know, encourage their kids to pursue their dreams in this way? Uh, definitely balance and priorities because it, it, it has gotten pretty uh, busy and, you know, it, it can get a little out of hand, you know, when, when the, it gets so busy and, you know, tensions can get a little high and you can get aggravated with each other. And so we always just try to take a step back, you know, when that happens and, you know, make sure we're, you know, in the right place priority wise. And I, I ask her quite often, you know, when it does get busy and it seems like she's getting a little stressed, you know, I say, you know, at any time, you know, just pull a plug. It's, it's no problem. You know, I mean, at year 11, you know, there's a whole life to live out. This is not your full time adult career yet. You know, so I, I always try to encourage her, you know, at any time, you know, she wants to just say, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm good with bath bombs for a while. That's that's a OK. You know, don't don't think of it. It has to be this lifetime thing that you got to do. And then do you have other children? Do you have siblings, Hannah? Yes, I have one brother. Is he, does he have the bug yet? The entrepreneurial bug? Is he doing anything? Not really. Which is fine. Just curious. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I really appreciate you hopping on too. It's always interesting for me to hear the parent's perspective as well as the child's perspective. Because I know it can be a lot of work <laughs> raising yeah. a child, period, but then encouraging, you know, big dreams. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it has its uh, very busy, busy moments, and then it has its calmer moments. So we just try to find the uh, the balance and, and live in that moment. Now, before we go, can you tell us where our listeners can learn more about you? Where can they find your products? You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Hannah Grace Beautiful. And my website is at com. That's great. I'm going to put all of those links in the show notes. So it'll be super easy for our listeners to find you and connect with you. So thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with us. Thank you. I really think you're going to inspire a bunch of other kids and a bunch of parents to encourage their kids through this process. Thank you. Thank you. You'll find all of the links mentioned in this week's episode and the show notes at megbrunson.com slash 67. We will be back on Friday to talk about family-focused content. Monday, you're going to enjoy marketing with Meg. And next Wednesday, another midweek mastermind, this time with Robin Walker. I want to know, are you in the Facebook group? If not, head over to familypreneurcommunity.com. That'll redirect you into our free Facebook group where you can connect with other parent entrepreneurs looking to build their business while strengthening their families. I can't wait to connect with you there. Have a great day and we'll talk soon. Bye. Do us a favor. Share this podcast to a friend. It's like my mom always says, sharing is caring.